Well, Andrew, thanks so much, sir, for coming on the program tonight. It's good talking to you. Good talking to you, Cameron. Uh, and you know, this is a fascinating piece that you posted at uh, nationalreview.com on the uh, Corner blog. Uh, an evaluation of investigative tactics, you say, is precisely the job of the Department of Justice. Here you have the head of the criminal division, Lanny Brewer, uh, claiming that, you know, he, he learned about the uh, the gun walking going on uh, in, uh, well, I guess, uh, last year, uh, but he never said anything at all to anybody about it, and his excuse is that, no, nah, you know, it's not really my job. It's not uh, Attorney Holder, or Attorney General Holder's job to uh, to sign off on the tactics that are used in DOJ investigations. Yeah, well, you know, I don't, I, I can't comment on what the relationship is between Brewer and and Holder. I have no idea, you know, what what uh, uh, what Brewer cuts the Attorney General in on and and what he doesn't. I, I'd be I'd find it very curious if they didn't talk about something like this for uh, over a year. But well, we got a memo from Lanny Brewer to Eric Holder talking about uh, indictments getting ready to come down in Fast and Furious. I mean, at, at some point, the two of them discussed the case. Yeah, but but what what made my eyes pop out when I read that part of his testimony was the business about how it's not the Justice Department's job to evaluate the tactics of an investigation. And the reason I was taken aback by that is because in 18 years as a prosecutor in a district U.S. attorney's office, a busy district U.S. attorney's office in New York that used the wiretap statute a lot, and as somebody who worked on a lot of wiretap cases and you know made a lot of uh, applications for wiretaps, um, I can tell you that the process is that you have to go through the Justice Department to get permission that that is never a rubber stamp mm -hmm. and that the statute requires not only that you get the approval of the attorney general or the attorney general's designee let's let's understand here that the you know the attorney general there's a, there's a lot of wiretap applications in the United States the attorney general is not sitting at his desk all day reading wiretap applications which can, which tend to be very lengthy right uh, they have a department that does that and it has a, a supervisor. But my point is that um, the statute requires the government to establish that alternative investigative techniques, that is, that are tactics outside of wiretapping, have either been tried and failed, or if they were tried, would fail to accomplish whatever the objectives are of the investigation. So there's no way that you can file a wiretap application in compliance with the statute without evaluating the tactics that you've used up to that point and making a representation to the court about what they are and why they will or will not accomplish what you say are the objectives of the investigation. And that is something that gets evaluated by the Justice Department. The whole reason that Congress requires the Justice Department to sign off on what the District U.S. Attorney's Office wants to do is because it wants to main, make sure the Justice Department maintains a high standard um, for issuing wiretap applications. Okay, so uh, when, when Brewer said that uh, they don't do this then, I mean, that sounds like as you point out, uh, they're, they're violating the federal wiretap statutes that uh, require a, a full and complete statement as to whether or not other investigative procedures have been tried and failed and why they reasonably appear to be unlikely to succeed if tried or, or be too dangerous. Uh, is that, I mean, is it the assertion, I guess, uh, of, of Lanny Brewer that that's just not done at, at Maine Justice these days? Well, I, I, I guess there's two different aspects to what you've asked. Um, I assume that they had to have in the wiretap application the representation about what other investigative techniques had been tried uh, and why wiretapping was needed in addition to those techniques, because um, if that's not in there, the court won't sign the wiretap application, because the court has to make a finding about that as well. So I assume the representation is in there. Uh, the question is, does the Justice Department evaluate it? Mm. And his testimony was, we don't evaluate that sort of stuff. We rely on the district U.S. attorneys to evaluate the investigative tactics. And that's just not true. Um, the whole reason for going through the Justice Department uh, is so that they can make these sorts of determinations, that, that, the, that the decision in this particular case to use a wiretap 
because whatever tactics you've been using up to that point uh, have, have run, have exhausted whatever value you can get out of them is the kind of thing that the Justice Department evaluates when it reviews a district's application to do a wiretap. Okay, and, and in doing so, then, uh, they, it seems reasonable, then, that they, it would have been disclosed that they were allowing these guns to, uh, to walk. I, I'd be astounded if that were not the case. Wow. So is this something, uh, Andrew, that uh, a, a, a politician who's hearing this testimony is going to pick up on, or uh, do you have to have had worked, uh, you know, in a, in a district uh, 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 U.S. attorney's office to, to kind of pick up on the nuances of what Lanny Brewer was saying? Well, I think it surely helps probably to, to have worked and gone through this process. I mean, I, I would, you know, look, I, there were aspects of um, uh, enforcing the federal criminal law that I, you know, that, that didn't come up more than once or twice in, in my experience, even though I was, not, I was there for a long time. So I imagine that there would be nuances of that that I wouldn't be as familiar with as somebody who worked in those kind of cases. I happen to have done a lot of wiretap cases, so this is one that sort of hit me over the head when I read it. You might figure that, you know, Congress writes the laws so they ought to know what's in them. Right. Uh, because some of these laws were actually passed before Congress used to come out and say you have to pass the laws to find out what's in them, right? That's, uh, I guess that's the new standard since Obamacare. But um, I guess <clears throat> we ought to bear in mind that the wiretap statute is probably about uh, 40 years old now. Uh, and, you know, maybe there are people in Congress who haven't familiarized themselves with its provisions, but I have good reason to think that they're probably uh, doing some homework on it now. Uh-huh. Now, just out of curiosity, I mean, if, if you were uh, one of those questioning Lanny Brewer, when he said this, what would your follow-up question have been? I would ask him, um, I, I would probably have a asked him what, what, the Justice Department, what the purpose of having the Justice Department sign off on the wiretap was. Okay. All and, right. You know, uh, uh, presumably he would not say it was just a rubber stamp, that mm -hmm. we don't even barely look at it, we just sign it. Uh, and then I would walk him through the things that he thought were important enough to have to evaluate and continue to ask him, so you would evaluate that, but not the alternative investigative techniques. Um, and just take them through it one by one. Because I, I have to tell you, the alternative investigative techniques, that part of it, where you talk about what techniques you've used and why they haven't worked, yeah. that's a big part of every wiretap application. There's a, there's a presumption in the law, maybe presumption's not the right word, there's a, there's a prejudice in the law against issuing or authorizing eavesdropping, because that is deemed to be... Uh, one of the most in intrusive things that government can do. Uh, and you can't do a wiretap without, uh, for example, intercepting the conversations of innocent people who don't have anything to do with the wiretap, uh, with the criminal investigation, rather, because you never know, you know, let's say you're up on a phone and there's five people living in the house and you have one person as the target of your, inv or your investigation. You're constantly intercepting the phone calls of people who have, who are not suspects in, of any kind in a criminal investigation. So, the law doesn't like to issue wiretaps. They're supposed to be reserved for particularly uh, important cases and egregious behavior. And for that reason, you really are supposed to demonstrate to the court that there's a compelling need to have them. And one of the things that a court has to assess when you're trying to show them that. Uh, to show the judge that there's a compelling need to have it, uh, is that there is no other way to get this information, and um, the information is very important to get because what we're dealing with here is serious crime. Yeah. But one of the things they go over very carefully is what other investigative steps you've taken. Interesting stuff. Hey, listen, Andrew, I'm really glad you could join us on the program today, sir, and uh, we may be relying on you. We know we've got uh, Attorney General Holder testifying before a uh, Senate committee next week. So maybe we can have you on and uh, help you parse the attorney general's words. Sure. Be delighted. Thank you so much. Andrew McCarthy uh, joining us from National Review Online here on NRANews.com and Sirius XM Patriot.